Ons gaan die woord van die Heere lees volgend, en dis morning aan in the book of John chapter 2, Johannes hoofstuk 2 vers 1 tot vers 11, dis waar het is volgend. I just want to say once again, welcome to everybody that's here, it's good to see everybody. I see that there are some people back from a trip away, they are back at church, welcome back. I see we've got some visitors here this morning, if this is your first time and you're visiting, just wave at me, amen. There's quite a few, welcome, welcome, welcome. Come on, let's give our visitors a big hand clap. All right, welcome. That's a big group they see Morgan. Here is your father's face. And welcome with us this morning. Amen. Welcome to everybody there on the on the gallery. It's also good to see everybody here this morning. By Helmut and Yellowwood. Let us go into the Word of God. And we give a thought, we give respect to God's Word by standing. And let's have a city Bible in Johannes will stick to a bash in the bash out. En op die derde dag was daar een breilof te Kana in Galilea en die moeder van Jesus was daar. En Jesus en sy disciples was ook na die breilof genooi. En toe daar wijn kort kom, sê die moeder van Jesus vir hom, wil het geen wijn nie. Jesus sê vir hom, vrou wat het ek met u te doen? My eer het nog nie gekom nie. Sy moeder sê vir die dienaars, en ons sê dienaars, net wat hy vir julle sê, moet julle doen. En daar het volgens die reinigings gebruike van die jode, sies klipkanne gestaan, wat elke een twee of drie ankers hou, 110 liters. Jesus sê vir hulle, maak die kanne vol water, en hulle het hulle tot boot toe, volgemaak. En hy sê aan hulle, skip nou uit en bring dit vir die hoofdienaar. En hulle dit gebring. En toe die hoofdienaar die water proef, wat wijn geboord het, het hy nie geweerd waarvan dit dit was nie. Maar die dienaars wat die water geskip het, het geweerd. Hy roep die hoofdienaar die breide op toe toe het die hoop die na die breide omgeroep en sê vol elke mens sit eers die goeie wijn op en wanneer hulle goed gedrink het, dan die sterste maar u het die goeie wijn tot nou toe bewaard hierdie was die eerste een van sy tekens het Jesus de kane in Galilea gedoen en hy het sy heerlijkheid geopenbaar en sy disciples het in hom gegloed Volgend wil ek met die praat oor uitgegiet. As jy wil hee die Heer moet jou gebruik in 2024, as jy wil hee die Heer is die heerlijkheid moet manifesteer in jou leven, sal jy moet toelaat dat die Heer in jou uitgeet. Nou wil ek net gauw sê, wie wil hee die Heer moet in hulle levens beweeg in hierdie nieuwe jaar? Ok, dan is hierdie boodskap vir jou. Die kese wat ek en jy het volgend is, gaan ons doen wat die woord sê, of gaan ons net luister, sê, ja, ek wil hy die Heere moet my gebruik, en dan kom nog geen van hulle. Dan is jy eindelijk bezig om jouself te lig en bedreig. Maar ek geloof, daar is nie iemand soos dit nie volgend nie. Ek geloof, elke persoon is ernstig en anstig dat die Heere moet hulle gebruik, en dat die Heere moet neer hulle weg. Dus hoe kom jy juist hier eens? So sê saam met my, sê Heere, maak my oore oor om te hoor en gee my hart om te ontvang so dat ek nie die selfde sal bly maar so dat ek kan verander en dat ek kan gaan van heerlijkheid tot heerlijkheid Amen Amen, ek kan die sitplek neem baie dankie haai, baie dankie aan Willenspan, baie dankie daarheen kom ons gee ons aan Willenspan en vroeg aan die plaas I want to say thank you very much to the worship team for the effort that they put in. They really do a phenomenal job to come an hour before the time to set up everything to make sure that we can go into the presence of God and enjoy the presence of God. So thank you very much Dalia and her team. They're doing a phenomenal job and I want to ask you now to give them a real hand clap. A big hand clap. I want to quickly read 
read this passage of Scripture in the New King James Version. As I said at the beginning of the service, once we are done here, at 12 o'clock we will be departing to go to the Creel Orphanage, Creel Kinneres. And um, it's been absolutely phenomenal to see the support from the congregation side, from the community side. Baie dankie vir die ondersteuning, mens is besig om te saai, mens is besig om te gee. Thank you so much. You know the Bible says, true religion in the eyes of God is to look after the widows and the orphans. And a part of the seed of the Feast of Tabernacles is to reach out to the orphans. We've been sowing into widows' lives, but now we want to reach out to the orphans because that's what we ought to do. If you remember when we were here at our first fruits offering, we read that scripture and we were to bring our first fruits so that there can be provision for the orphans. And today that's what we are doing. We are being obedient to our first fruits offering of the Feast of Tabernacles. And we're going to reach out to the orphanage to bless them. And it's a part of what you've given. That's your seed that's been used. This is your sort of gebruik word om dit te doen. So thank you very much. Your first fruits is actually sponsoring this uh, people that have sown. We are so, so grateful. And uh, we are so blessed just to see the heart that people have. You weet, mense kom na my deel, hy wil net betrokke wees, hy wil net deel wees. And if you still want to go, you are more than welcome. We're going to be busy from about 12 to 3 there in Creel. Uh, we're not going to rush it, but however so long it takes, we're going to spend time with those children. And when we go there, we don't just go there to preach, to bring them to salvation and come home. We don't do a hit and run. We go in and we invest time, we love them, we speak to them, we, we minister to them. You know, just playing touch rugby with those boys and just playing with those little girls and spending time with them. That's what it's all about. So to this afternoon from 12 o'clock we will be departing, the bus will be going. There's a big trailer full of clothes and sweets and everything that's in that trailer. We're going to take everything there and it's going to be awesome. Isn't it blessed that it's raining? Amen. I can't even I can like it, does it? Amen. Can I see Dr. Sir for the year for the area? Come on, let's give the Lord a hand. Up. I like it even more as I came up and started raining. You know? I like that. I like it that God is busy blessing us, that God is rewarding us. It's not about me. But, um, I, excuse me if it sounded like it was about me. What, what I'm saying is, as we started reading the Word, it just started raining very hard. And, and for me, that's a manifestation. I see, I see God working, even in nature. I see you hear about God in the I see God in others. And for me, it's as if God is saying, I want to give you rain in this new year. Amen. Now, I'm busy for, from last week and this week and next week. I'm going to be busy ministering to you prophetic messages for the new year. Because the Holy Spirit has been leading me. The other thing is, is we have made the light. Who can the new year like? What can we do in the new year? And who can we go to the new flock? Who can we go to the new flock? Let me quickly ask all of you, you don't have to stretch forth your hand. Because just now the person behind you sees your hand. <laughs> but who of you would say, if you're seated here, just be really honest. This has been a tough year. There's been a lot of challenges. And you want breakthrough for the future. Who of you could say, you know what, I agree with you, Pastor. I need breakthrough. This has been one tough year. There have been challenges. There have been obstacles. And I'm trusting God for breakthrough. And I want to challenge you. Open your heart to what God is saying in this season. Mark your heart open for what the year of the year say in any season. You know, when you come to church, don't just come for the service. Come to hear a word from God. Come on, my word, the word from me. En dan as jy uit gaan sê, hoe kan ek hierdie woord toepas? Die belangrijkste gedeelte van hierdie dienst is nie die aanbidding, is nie die overhande nie, is nie is die preek nie. Die belangrijkste deel van enige dienst is na die tijd. Wat doen jy? Yeah. Are you going to go home and build your house upon the rock? Or are you going to build it upon the sand? And every one of us are going to go build after the service. And when you do what the word says, you're building upon the rock. When you do, when you don't do what the word says, you're building upon the sand. And the storms of life will always reveal what's your foundation. Now, in four weeks' time, I'm counting down the time, four weeks' time. 
drie weke van nou, wat in ons 21 dag vast in gebed. We start in 21 days of fasting and praying. Through January, we're going to take the month of January and consecrate ourselves. We're going to consecrate ourselves two days a year for the new year. We're going to consecrate ourselves. We're going to come together on Wednesday nights. We're going to do. I'm going to do a teaching on fasting and praying. We're going to intercede for each other. We're going to intercede for the text area. We're going to intercede for our children. We're going to intercede for our finances, our health. So we're going to start three weeks of fasting and praying in January. Now you might be saying to your boss, I'm just trying to get through the year. I want you to get your heart ready. I'm busy getting my heart ready. I'm, I'm ready to go to a new level. Uh, I'm not ready to wind down and, uh, you know, take it easy. I want to go to a new level. So we're going to start fasting from the second week of January when everybody's back from holiday. We're going to spend time for 21 days fasting. That is the international um, fasting window for the church worldwide churches ministries are fasting for 21 days and if you look at how crazy the world is and if you look at everything that's happening more than ever we need to fast there's the elections next year in south africa so we need to fast okay now, i want to quickly ask you a question let's say another pandemic comes and maybe it's two times worse than COVID. do you have the spiritual fortitude Die jy daar geestelike vermoog te sê, ek kan beedruk en ek kan op die ander kant uitkom. I believe, and I, and I can't prophesy what I really feel in my spirit, but what I believe is coming, is going to be, it's going to be rough. And if the church does not pray, if the church does not fast, we're going to pay a dear price. Ons moet die Heere nou so, We've got to seek God now. So that's why I'm sharing this scripture, this passage of scripture with you today. I want you to have your heart ready for the new year. And I want to see God work through you. And I want to see God do a work in you. Can you say amen? Amen. We're going to come together on Sunday nights right through our January. We're going to be here in church. We're going to be praying. We're going to be calling out to God. And I invite you, get your heart ready for January. It's going to be a month of consecration. The kind of man be as one fast and gebed. Amen. Let's quickly read the scripture in the English for our English audience. John chapter 2 verse 1 to 11. On the third day, everybody say the third day. There was a wedding in Cana of Galilee and the mother of Jesus was there. Now both Jesus and his disciples were invited to the wedding. And when they ran out of wine, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. Verse 4. And Jesus said to her, Woman, what does your concern have to do with me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, Whatever he says to you, do it. Now there was set there six water pots of stone, according to the manner of purification of the Jews, containing 20 or 30 gallons apiece. That's 110 liters of water that these pots of stone pots could contain. Verse 7, Jesus said to them, fill the water pots with water. Fill the water pots with water. And they filled them up to the brim. Not halfway, not a quarter, not three quarters, but to the brim. And they filled them up. Verse 8, and he said to them, draw some out now and take it to the master of the feast. And they took it. And when the master of the feast had tasted the water that was made wine, and did not know where it came from, but the servants who had drawn the water knew. In other words, the servants had a source. The servants went to a source. And we don't know what source that is. It could have been a lake. It could have been a stream. It could have been a river. But the Bible says that the servants had drawn that water from somewhere. But they knew that it was water that had changed to wine. The master of the ceremonies did it. When the master of the, then the master of the feast called the bridegroom, verse 10, and he said to him, every man at the beginning sets out the good wine, and when the guests have well drunk, then the inferior wine. In other words, you put out your best wine, and then when people have, they've had a lack of care, then you bring out the cheap wine, because they can't taste the difference. <laughs> and then you have kept the good wine until now. Verse 11, this was the beginning of the signs Jesus did in Cana of Galilee and manifested His glory 
and his disciples believed in him. Can you say amen for the word of God? Amen. Before I continue with this, I just want to say, Marina, our hearts go out to you with the passing of a father. They buried him yesterday. They had his funeral. May God comfort you and your family, your mom in Creole, and may God be with you in this season. We, we are praying for you. We love you. And we really, our thoughts are with you in this time. Okay? Amen. And then um, Marty has asked for prayer for Oma. Uh, we will pray for Oma. We will intercede for Oma. Um, she's going in tomorrow. They're going to do a checkup on her. And we're trusting God that everything will be well. Um, she did not have function in her leg. There was no blood circulation. We pray for her. She's got faith. And we have seen the hand of God. So Marty, consult and pray for Oma. Okay, please pray with us for Marty's mother in your time of prayer. Thank you very much. As we look at this passage of scripture, soos wat ons kyk na hierdie hoofstuk, is het belangrik om terug te gaan na die eerste hoofstuk. It's crucial to go to the first chapter. And we've got to go to John chapter 1, verse 1 to 5. Because the Apostle John wrote these words, and listen to what he wrote. The Bible says in John chapter 1, verse 1 to verse 5, In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God, and all things were made through Him. And without Him, nothing was made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. Afrikaans. In die begin was die woord, en die woord was by God. En die woord was God. Hy was in die begin by God. Alle dinge het dier om ontstaan, en sonder om het nie een ding ontstaan wat ontstaan het nie. In hom was die lewe. En die lewe was die licht van die mense. Vers 5. En die licht skyn in die duisternis, en die duisternis het het nie oorweldig. So what the Apostle John tells us in John chapter 1 is that this Messiah, this Jesus, He's not just human, He is God. He introduces us to Jesus as God. He's divine. He reveals the divinity of Jesus. Hy weis vir ons die godlike kant van die Heere Jesus. That's the introduction that He has in His Gospel. That Jesus was in the beginning at creation. In Genesis chapter 1 when God spoke and He said, Let there be light and there was light. What was that light? Genesis chapter 3 verse 1. That light was this, what John is speaking about. The light of God's word. That was in the beginning. John says nothing, nothing that you ever see that exists. Nothing was created without it. In everything, absolutely everything, in the unseen realm and in the seen realm, finds its existence in that word. I'm going to ask you just to keep the scripture up there, please. Let there be light. Genesis chapter th uh, 1 verse 3. Let there be light. That wasn't the sun. The sun was created on day 4. That was the light of Jesus. That was the light of the year Jesus. So whenever you read about Jesus, you're not just reading about a rabbi. You're not just reading about an evangelist. Jy lees nie net van iemand wat een leeraar was, of iemand wat een evangelist was. Jy lees van iemand wat in die begin was. Hy is God. Hy was daar. Colossense hoofstuk 1 vers 16 tot 17 sê, Alles vind sy doel in Jesus. Everything finds its purpose in Jesus. Colossians chapter 1 verse 16 to 17. Everything, absolutely everything. Did you know even the devil was created for God? Did you know that every person was created for God? Every creature was created for God. It doesn't mean that everyone lives for God. Did you know the devil here for the 
Gelaat nie. Maar hy was geskapen dier God. God het om geskapen met te doel. En wanneer ons nie ons doel uit leef nie, is ons eindelijk besig om te rebel tegen die doel wat God het vir ons. Elke persoon wat hier sit vandag, elke persoon wat my stem kan hoor, ek wil vir jou sê, die Heer het die doel vir jou in die seizoen. Die Heer het die doel vir jou lewe. Die Heer het die doel vir jou as een moeder. Die Heer het die doel vir jou as een vader. Die Heer het die doel met jou waar jy werk. Waar ook al jy leef. God has got a purpose for everything. For everyone. And it's our choice if we're going to live for His purpose. In His divinity. In His sovereignty. He created us to function for His glory. And the Bible tells us in John chapter 1, verse 14. You want us to stick here in verse 14. That word that was in the beginning. That word that is so powerful. That was the life and the light of men. It became flesh and dwelt amongst us. Die woord het gemanifesteer en in die volheid van die woord en vlees, daar kom Jesus. Die seel van God. And that's how John introduces Jesus to us. He shows us his God side. He shows us his divine side. And we are introduced to the pinnacle of God's creation. And then in John chapter 2, we see how God, Jesus, he said a party. That's my party. Think about it. John chapter 1, he's here at the pinnacle of creation. And John chapter 2, he's here between people at a party. Amen. Now is it vandaag was. Hey, the kerk sal om gekruisig het. This Jesus, he says he's a prophet. What's he doing at a party? And doesn't he know that they are sinners? Weet jy wat, jy kan duivel bewis wees, of jy kan God bewis wees. Amen. Kom ek vraag vir jou, soek jy die duivel in alles, of soek jy God in alles? I know some people, they ghostbusters in the spirit. They constantly looking for a demonic spirit. They constantly looking for a problem. They constantly looking for an issue. And they constantly looking for something. They try to find a devil in everything. My husband's got a devil. Why does he have a devil? He keeps losing his temper. He keeps getting angry. Well, have you paid attention to him lately? No, I can't. I don't want to. I don't have time. But well, maybe that's the root of the problem. Am I speaking to somebody? Maybe. Maybe you came to church this morning and the Holy Spirit wants to do marriage counseling with you. I don't know what it is. <laughs> my kid had the devil. Who could you get the devil? My, my kid had the emir. And God tantrum. And I get the bottom to do it. Ek wil net vir jou sê, ons die duivel en die kind nie, maar as een knopje op sy boot, as jy hom lekker hard druk, dan die beskeerlik is wat groot vir ander. You see, we've got to stop this devil business. Now, I'm telling you, right? I'm speaking truth here. You know, 90% of the time, what we say is the devil, the devil's not even busy. It's the flesh. This is flesh. And until we hear the Christ, we will not see the heroic of God. Until we start crucifying the flesh and stop giving credit to the devil, I'm telling you, we're not going to see the hand of God. We're not going to see the blessing of God. Am I speaking to somebody this morning? Sure, we're quiet in this Catholic church this morning. You have been shocked at my soul. They have said something. I struck a nerve somewhere. Anyway, let's just move on. Okay, let me salvage the rest of the service. The Bible says that Jesus was at a party. He was at a party. And at this party, He would manifest for the very first time His glory. Think about it. Not in a temple. Not in a church. Not in a crusade. Not by a veld of a synagogue. But where? By a party. A trouwe. A bridle. You know, it shows me that Jesus wants to be amongst his people. Amen. Think with me. If Jesus was here today in the form of man, I know he's here in the spirit, and I know he rules and reigns through us, and I know through the Holy Spirit he manifests us, but let's just go back to biblical times. Imagine if Jesus, there was a modern day Jesus who walked up and down, and, and he was here with us, and he traveled, and he preached, and where would you find Jesus? Would you always find him in the church? 
No, you would find him amongst the sinful. You would find him amongst the corrupt. You would find him at places that the church wouldn't approve of. You find him in places that would horrify Christians. But you see, Jesus is not affected by the pollution of sin. Jesus could keep his divinity and stay holy and remain the Son of God in spite of people's sin. He went down from heaven, from that lofty position in heaven. He came down to earth to reach the hearts of man. And while he came down, he was not influenced by man, but rather influenced man. And he showed us what it means to be loved, Amen. to be in the midst of people. We see here how Jesus manifests the heart of the Father. You know John chapter 14 verse 9. Johannes Rustic 14 verse 9. The Heere Jesus said, As jy my gesien het, het jy die Vader gesien. You've seen the Father. You want to see the Father? You want to see God? Look at me. Whatever I do, whatever I say, that is the Father. That is God. As ek uitreik na die prostitie, as ek uitreik na die tollenaar, as ek die sondaar bereik, dit is die hart van die vader. Jesus was bereik om oor grense te trap, van geslag, van kultuur, van traditie en godsdienst, om betuig die ense te ontstig, so dat hy siele kan bereik. That's the heart of the Father. That's the heart of the Father to reach the lost, to reach the destitute, to reach the broken. The Father wants to be there. He wants to love those that are unlovely. He wants to love those that are unkind. That's the heart of the Father. And Jesus says, I am Him revealed. If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. When I'm in the midst of people, that's the heart of the Father. The Father will tissen me in severe. Matthew chapter 1 verse 23, at the birth of Jesus it was announced that he will be called what? Emmanuel, God with us. Not God far from us, not God distant from us, not God that is passive from us, but God that is with us. And yeah, we see at this wedding, we see him by the bridal, we see who Jesus met us. He is not in the middle of the Hij is daar te sien mense, bezig om grapies te maak, bezig om te gesels, bezig om te praat met mense, liefde te wees, omgeef, om te omgeef vir mense. Dit is Jesus. That's his heart. Throughout the scripture from Genesis chapter 3, where God called out to Adam and said, Where are you? Right throughout the Bible to the book of Revelation, chapter 20, we see God is constantly wanting to be in the midst of his people. The Heer will hear me in ons midde. The Heer will be a star in your eyes. He will be a in the midde of your heavenly. He will be a in the midde of your gesin. He will make your fears. God does not live in a temple built of, a built of bricks and mortar and cement. He lives in the hearts of man. Colossians chapter 1 verse 27. Colossians over sticky and passion and dwell. Paulus praat van die groot geheim, die groot openbaring. Hy sê, weet jy wat is die groot openbaring? God is in ons. God is in us. Die Heer is in ons. That the divine, the most holy God can come down from heaven and deposit His glory on the inside of us and not be touched by our sin. It's a miracle. It's a mystery how God could do that. But I've come to tell you, God wants to be in your heart. The Heer will leef in jou hart. Hy wil die koning wees van jou hart. Kijk vir die persoon langs jou en sê die Heer wil binnen in jou leef. Misschien hoor hulle my nie lekker nie te hoor. But come on, just declare it. He wants to be in our hearts. Hy wil in ons hart te leef. That's the whole point of Pentecost. We call ourselves a Pentecostal church. But what's the point of Pentecost? Is that God can rule and reign in the hearts of man. That God can rule and reign in our hearts. That He can move in our midst. That He can touch us. That He can empower us. That people can see Jesus in us. Amen. Ek wil jou vraag, kan mense Jesus in jou sien? Kan mense Jesus hoor as jy praat? Of is ons net leer blikke, wat een groot geraas maak? The Bible says that He was at a wedding. 
Hier was een bruiloft, een Joodse bruiloft. Dat is belangrijk om te weten hoe werkt een Joodse bruiloft. Vandaag trouwens, als jij trouwt, je komt bij de kerk op een dag. If you get married today, you come to a church. Je hebt hier die ceremonie, you've got the ceremony, and as you've got the ceremony, the pastor marries the couple, and they become one in the eyes of God, and they are witnesses which are family and friends that are there at that ceremony, and then we go to the reception, and we celebrate the reception, and then we are there busy having a party, and then once the pastor leaves, then we pay a letter. As a pastor, no, yes, why? I'm going to say, okay. And when you're in the table, you're going to do that, why? I'm going to say, like a job. I feel it, I talk about my friend. I throw him a part, cost for a part, mix for the middle of it, but I throw a part. He lists it by the way, but I like what to say. And I bring some bottles, I sit at the end of the night. Nou sit ek hier by hom, nou elke keer as ek so beweeg, dan maak hy sy hand so, dan steek hy hy bottels af onder sy stoel. Toe later, toen ek die tafel gebed, ek eet, en toe ek opstaan, hy sê vir sy vrou, ook kan ons lekker kei af. En hy is dan weg. Dat is fout, as die wereld gemakkelijk voel om jou. There is a big problem. And people can live in darkness and not feel convicted around you. There needs to be a conviction. Dat moet een oortuiging wees. Ek is een sondag. Ek is die recht nie. There's something wrong when we as Christians meddle with the world and there is no conviction on the world side. But actually they feel approved by the way you live and the way you talk and they feel okay, you know what, I'm actually on the right path. Because he is saved, but I mean, we do the same thing. So what's the difference? It's a big problem. Today it's a few hours and the wedding's finished. In biblical time, you started the celebration on the weekend and it went right throughout the week. Right here in the world. Is it a beer on party though? They're busy celebrating every single day. There was a lot of logistics that went with planning around the wedding in the Jewish culture. Even till today. Family would come from all over. Friends would come from all over. And as they would come, they would come and stay and you'd have to organize them accommodation, you'd have to make sure there's food, every day they would come together and it was one great meal and it was one great celebration and everybody's just visiting. So that's what happened in Jewish weddings. And a lot of planning and preparation would have to go into the wedding. Buy a voorbereiding, buy a plan and we're going to die, bring off and on circuit. Maak ons genoeg kost en allemaal het een blij plek en allemaal is verzorg en alles is geseend en allemaal is gelukkig en allemaal is geselig. It was a big thing to get married in biblical times. It was a huge thing. And the Bible says there was a problem at this wedding. There was a problem. They ran out of wine. There was a big rainy. Now this was not just embarrassing, it was humiliating. That was a great failure for the families. How could we run out of wine? Why did we run out of wine? Was there not enough preparation? Was there not enough planning? Misschien het hulle nie genoeg beplan nie. Misschien het hulle nie genoeg gedoen nie. Misschien het hulle nie alles deurgedink nie. Misschien die persoon wat moes die bottels bestel vergeet. Be mad. Who knows what happened at this wedding? But in all, they ran out of wine. Now, wine in the Bible is symbolic of celebration. At every celebration, at every festival, there would be wine. But not just that, wine is also symbolic of the Holy Spirit in the spiritual. I'm not talking about the sinful side of alcohol. I'm talking about wine, the celebration, the festival. That's what I'm talking about. That's the context that I'm speaking about. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 18. What does Paul tell us? Do not be drunk in the natural, but be filled with the spirit in the spiritual. Let the Heilige Geest, you're full. Have you seen somebody that's been filled with the Holy Spirit? They can't stand on their own two feet. Everything is funny. They're just filled with joy. They're overwhelmed with the glory of God. Why? What happened? They've been filled with the Spirit. They've been filled with the wine of the Spirit. 
Even Jesus speaks about if God's going to move in your life. He's got to give you new wine. Luke chapter 5 verse 37 to 39. There has to be new wine. And for there to be new wine, there needs to be wine skins. You have to have a new way of doing things. You've got to be open to what God wants to do. So wine in the scripture is symbolic of the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit. But not only that, it's a move of God. And the Bible says it was at this wedding they ran out of wine. Could it be that the church has run out of wine? Could this be a picture of a church today that it says, Can you pray to us for the for the care for the love of Islam? We said, "I buy, I cut." We said, "We are waiting for you." We said, "Not more that fierce atmosphere." We are not more excited for the future. We are not more upcoming about the care for the future. Sila wordt niet meer gereed nie. Dat is niet meer geneesens wat plaas vind nie. Mens is niet meer bevry nie. Die heerlijkheid van God beweeg nie soos wat hy altyd beweeg het nie. Mens wil nie meer bid nie. Hulle sal nie wist een koffie gaan drink by een vriend. En keier by een vriend is wat hulle by die kerk uit kom en gaan bid. Dan praat ek nie van julle wat die soorde stee. Ek praat van die wat ek gedink het aan ander christen en aan hulle kwaad wat in die kerk is. Have we lost our wine? Have we lost that desire? Have we lost that zeal, that passion to say, you know what? Whatever it takes, I want to be there. I want the wine. I want the new wine of the Holy Spirit. Be van jylle soek die nieuwe wijn. Ek gloe die Heer het nieuwe wijn vir sy kerk. I believe God wants to bring a new movement. God wants to give us revival. I believe God wants to pour out His Spirit. But the question is, do we recognize that we've run out of wine? Is ons bewus van die feit dat ons uit wijn en kaap loop het? The Bible says in 1 Samuel chapter 3 verse 1 to 3 that there was no revelation. The word of God was not spoken. And the Bible says the light went out in the most holy place. The light went out. The light that was supposed to reveal what's happening in the holy place went out. God left the people and they did not even realize it. But they were having church and it came they ran out of wine, they just didn't know it. They had a wine in the car. They had not even come to the Lord, the Lord is not here with us. Until they went to war, until conflict came. Did you know you can think you are right, and you can think you are blessed, and you can think you are the man, and you can think you are spiritual, and man, if you speak, demons flee, and you get revelation, and the Holy Spirit speaks to you, but you will not truly know if you run out of wine until conflict comes. Let conflict come. Let tension come. Let circumstances arise. Let the devil attack you. Then you realize, shit, I've got no wine. Now everybody at this party is upset and everybody's angry and you can just imagine the atmosphere. Hey, and if I just don't care, what's going to be a guy man? What can I do with these people? How can I do this so much? Man, I can't even plan me. I can't do all this here, I can't do it. And you can see that there was a man here in the English door and he is now busy to do it. And he knows how to do it, but he doesn't have to do it. And he's a man who's a man. And this is a big problem. This is a massive problem. And the Bible says that Mother Mary did something. She's there. And she takes it upon herself to go to Jesus with this problem. Then get a crisis. Say, find it no Jesus to. She took it to Jesus. And she went to him and he said, and she said to him, they've run out of wine. And Jesus' answer is, woman, what does it have to do with me? My time has not yet come. I'm not ready to debut my glory. I'm not ready to reveal myself as the Messiah. This is not my hour. This is my evening. This is my work for my year. Look at me. What is it with my end of my? I can see beers are on me on time. I can see beers are on the kind with my disciples. On those beers are on the gesels on the grappen. My gosh, it's your work. I can see. What is it with my end of my? You know what I love about this passage of scripture? Jesus actually reveals something. He says, my hour has not yet come. It's not the moment for me to be in the limelight. And this is something that this generation needs to understand. If it's not your moment, if it's not your hour, you don't want the limelight. Even Jesus, the Son of God, was willing to say, I'm going to sit in the background, I'm going to be a nobody, I don't 
want recognition, I don't want credentials until the Father ordains me to get those credentials, until the Father ordains me to get that recognition. If you try and seek recognition too quick, it can destroy your ministry. It can destroy what God wants to do through you. And I see young, powerful evangelists and pastors too quickly trying to grab onto power, too quickly seeking position. Do you know how long it took me to become the pastor of this church? It took years. Years of convincing. From 2009, right through to 2015, I had to constantly be asked, are you going to pastor the church? Are you going to pastor? And even when I went to Bible school and I came back, I could not give a guarantee. I did not know if it was for me. I even got offered to go work back at Cecil. I wanted to go back to Cecil. I wanted to go and work for myself. I didn't want to be dependent upon tithes and offerings. I didn't want to be dependent upon people. I wanted to be dependent upon God. And if I could work for myself, that was enough. Little did I realize that God was wanting to be my source. Amen. But it took a lot of convincing. I didn't want to get in the pulpit. I didn't want to preach. Pastor Abel had to force me to start preaching. I remember if he was here, I didn't preach. I said, no, you preach. He says, no, I don't want to preach. No, you preach. No, God is not putting anything in my heart. No, you preach. You preach. And then he started doing something. He started going away for weekends. <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't have the finances to go away for weekends. I can't even finance his heart. And I can't even see it on the prayer. And I must even finance on the prayer. But let me tell you something. If you try and get into the limelight too quickly, it can hurt you. Sometimes God will put you in obscurity, in the background. And He says, I want to form you there. Some of the most precious things of God are hidden. Think about it. Where's gold? Where's silver? Where's platinum? It's hidden. And some of the most precious things of God, some of the most precious resources of God are in the dark. Look at creation. The most precious part of any tree is its root system. It's in the dark. Sometimes God will put you in the dark and He'll ask you to be faithful and He'll ask you to be committed and He'll ask you to be the first one in, the last one out. Nobody gives you credit. Nobody sees what you're doing. But can you do it? Because if you're willing to do that, God can take you to new heights. But today, if you don't give somebody credit and you don't give them a hand clap and if you don't say thank you, they get upset. Get angry, and the pop up the and then escape on the gap. We need a mature generation to come through the church Amen. that is not looking, looking for recognition, but looking to please God. Amen. Can you say Amen? Prophet with him My ear had not been recording. But the Bible says she did something. She took the problem to Jesus. Can I ask a question? And I want to ask you, every single person sitting here, how much more breakthrough would we see if we took our problems, our crises to Jesus, yes. rather than speaking about it and discussing it? Yes. I'm not saying there's something wrong in sharing your heart or going for counseling or coming to the pastor because you need prayer and you need to explain what's happening. I'm not talking about that. We need partners of faith. Elke een van ons het een geloofsgenoot nodig. Elke een van ons het een pastoor door een geherde. Iemand wat kan saam met ons staan en bid. Matthäus hoofdstuk 18 vers 18 tot 20. Jesus sê, wat twee of meer saam vergaarde, daar is ek in die middel van hulle. En wat twee of meer saam stem oor enige saak, so sal dit wees. Hoe kan ek saam stem as ek nie jou hart hoor nie? But let me ask you a question. Now with that being said, how much more breakthrough would we see if we just took it immediately to Jesus? Amen. If we took it immediately to Jesus. Philippians chapter 4 verse 6 to 7, the Apostle Paul writes, he says, do not be worried about anything. When the dollar to the rand is 25 rand, do not worry about anything. When it's 40 rand for a liter of petrol, do not worry about anything. When there's political chaos in the land and the economy is busy tumbling, do not worry about anything. Worry does not belong to you. But come in this bewind the on your me. Be from your as a come from here. Let's go feel from your days from your yellow baby. Come and kite her. Be from your say yellow as a come from here. I've run it in Afrikaans that I can see the years a good one here. 
Okay. We've got children of God. Do you want to do your hand up still? The common is not here, you know. Free is not here, you know. Angst is not here, you know. And the Apostle Paul says, instead of worrying, pray. And guess what's going to happen if you start praying? You're going to experience peace. You can free your life off. This is the one that I said, but come at this. Dan bid ek hier, dan voel ek daar vrede, dan voel ek sommer beter, dan voel ek, wow, die Heer is met my, man, ek is een kampioen, man, ek is over bin, nou, Jesus is met my, die Heilige Geest is met my. But sometimes talking about it causes more problems. You know, like Pastor David says, telephone is fast, but tell a Christian is faster, man. Nee? <laughs> she went to Jesus, she took the problem to Jesus. Sy die probleem, die krisis gepakt na Jesus. And when Jesus said, it's not my hour, what does she do? She turns to who? The mayor? Did I say Marie Berger does that do? Who does she turn to? Does she turn to the people that are the elite in the community? They have got affluence and affluence. Did I say Marie Mellens with status and erkennen? With great rang in the regering? Draai sy nou die wat groot amte heet en die kerk, does she turn to those with great position and authority? Who does she turn to? Die dienstnechte, allemaal sê die dienstnechte. She turned to the servants. She turned to the servants. No name. We don't even know their names. Ons ken nie is in die naam nie. Al wat ons weet is, hulle was dienstnechte. And she says something to them. And what she says to them becomes a key for us to see God use us in 2024. She says to them, do what He tells you. Do what they for your sin. Do what He says. Whatever He tells you, do it. Two keys for God using you in 2024. I want to quickly see who wants God to use them in 2024. Don't you want God to use you in the new year? Don't you want God to use you in the new year? Well then this is for you. Number one, service. Number two, obedience. Number one, dienstbare. Number two, gehoorzaam. Jy kan nie gebruik word dier die Heere as jy nie een dienstnecht is wat gehoorzaam is. You cannot be used of God in a mighty way if you're not first a servant who's obedient. Weet jy, ek is geroep om die pastoor te wees van hierdie gemeente, maar weet jy wat, ek het een hoog titel is dit, ek is die dienstnecht van die allerhoogste God. En hy praat met my, en hy sê, maak so, en doen dit, en gaan daar, en bereik hulle, en preek dit, en God is constantly speaking to me, I want you to preach this word this weekend, and I want you to do that, and I want you to reach out to that couple, and I want you to go preach on the streets, and I, and I want you to stretch yourself, and I want you to expand yourself, and I'm going to send an opportunity this weekend, people are going to ask you to preach, and people are going to ask you to be a part of something, and I want you to do that, and every time I obey, and every time I listen, it's not always comfortable, but I keep doing what he says, I keep doing, why? Because I want to be used to it. I want to be used of him. I'm busy, I'm busy serving. I'm busy serving. You know what it means to be a leader in the church? It means you're a servant. Jesus said, the greatest among you is the servant. Amen. Is the servant. If you ever want to see the greatest in the kingdom of God, don't look who's in the pulpit. Look who's cleaning the toilets. Look who's greeting people at the door. Look who's teaching at the Sunday school. That is the greatest. Those that take the time, the effort, the energy to pour into other people, to be used of God. What we lack in the church is servants. Because we want a social club. Want to hear come and care and want to look at care and position. And what happens is we nullify, neutralize the power of God when God wants to use us. You know, somebody told me a while back they were in the church. Very, very angry. And I remember when this person came to salvation, they prayed with me and I prayed for them that God would use them for ministry. And it was a short while later they quit. Don't want to be in the church anymore. I said, why? The people just use me. I said, but isn't that what you pray for? Now you're angry that it's happened. Did you know what you were praying for? Because sometimes you can pray for something and then God uses you, you don't like it. 
It's not my style. It's not my mojo. <laughs> this is not my flow. Well, get a flow, get a mojo, do whatever you need to, but start letting God use you. Die Heere wil jou gebruik nie net in die kerk, hy wil jou gebruik in jou werk somstandighede. Hy wil jou gebruik daar in jou gebied, hy wil jou gebruik waar wat kan jy gaan, hy wil jou gebruik om licht te wees in duisternis, kan jy sê amen? Hy wil jou gebruik om in te kree vir die klein kinders wat er daas is. Hy wil jou gebruik om te, die kinders te leer by die sondagschool, hy wil jou gebruik om deel te wees van die aanbiddingspan. He wants to use you, but I will answer in the call. He spoke to the servants. Isaiah 40 verse 31 Those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength they shall mount up on wings of the eagles they shall run and not grow weary but you know what that word wait means it's the same word you use for a waiter what does a waiter do? goes to the client, what do you want? this is what I want, I'll do what you want okay, you, once you've done what they wanted you do what they want again and you do what they want again you know what we need in the kingdom of God? We need waiters. Yeah. You know what was my best Bible school training? It is net ons volgende maand. Ek sal my hart met julle deel. Weet jy wat was die grootste opleiding vir my as een pastoor? God put me in spur for 2 years. For 24 months. And I learned to wait. I went and did many workshops. I've gone to many camps. I've gone to a Bible school. I've got a theological degree. I don't even know where it is. The certificate. It doesn't matter. I've done all of that. I've been ordained as a pastor. I've got credentials as a pastor. But none of that prepared me for ministry like waitering on people. Yeah. Letting people insult you, letting people get angry at you, and you've got to put a smile on your face because that's the client. Yeah. He's paying your salary. He's going to tip you. And they I had to learn to serve. For two years, chip still there. Chip still there. A waiter that's cheeky doesn't get far. I had to learn not to be cheeky. I had to learn to drop my attitude. In this passage of scripture, who's used to manifest the glory? A waiter. And the Bible says there were six water jars. I'm going to say six. Six water pots. And each could take 30 gallons. 30 gallons, 110 liters. That was the capacity. And Jesus looks at the waiters and he says, Fall them to the brim. In other words, they were empty. Weet jy wat ek dit vir my sê? Die Heere kan net mense gebruik wat leeg is. Bij die mense, hulle het een awesome roep en hulle het een awesome eiker, maar hulle so vol van hulle self en ander goed, dat die Heere nie kan gebruik. As long as you're full, God cannot fill you up. And I've had to learn, the more God fills me up, the more I've got to empty myself. And just when I thought I've emptied myself of everything, God says, no, I need you to empty more, and I need you to empty more, and I need you to get rid of that attitude, and I need you to get rid of that perspective, and the way you speak there, the way you act there, the things you do there, I want you to change that. You've got to empty yourself. The more you walk with Christ, the more you've got to empty yourself. Now let me ask you again, who of you want to be used of God in 2024? Are you ready for God to empty you? Are you ready for God to empty you? It must that you say, yeah. Because when the process starts and God starts emptying you and starts stripping you away until there's nothing left but Jesus, then you can't despise the process. They say, what I say, Potter, 110 liters. That was the capacity of one pot. That was the capacity of one pot. Let me tell you something. We've all got a capacity. I get the capacity, you have the capacity. Every one of us have got a capacity. And God cannot bless you and me beyond our capacity. Whenever we start praying, God use me, God bless me, God increase me, God says, let me measure your capacity. Because if you don't have the capacity and I pour out what you're asking for, it will be squandered, it will be a mess. But that year is ons bezig om te bid vir 5 liters, maar ons het net die 1 liter kapasiteit in die geest. Sometimes we are praying for more than what we can handle. And whenever you start praying like that, God is measuring you. We've all got a capacity for frustration. We've all got a capacity for controversy. We've all got a capacity to handle trouble and conflict. 
And some people, their capacity is just not there. And God has to increase their capacity. But they own, say, come in the prat, and you can help the start mark, but the capacity is not there. They are 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 not there. Dan sal ek wat, dit is op sê, dit ek nie, hoekom, die capaciteit is net nie daar. You know the disciples didn't have the capacity they needed to chase demons in Matthew chapter 17. They didn't have the capacity. And when they could not drive out a demon, a father that was frustrated with the disciples went to Jesus and said, they could not drive out the demon, I've asked them. Why? Because they did not have the spiritual capacity. Het jy die geestelike capaciteit? Om die duivel af te vat, as hy teen jou kom, teen jou huisgesin, teen jou hevelik, teen jou finansies. Het jy daar geestelike kapasiteit en gesag om te sê, hey, Satan, wijk in Jesus' naam. And Jesus said to them in Matthew chapter 17 verse 21, He says, the only way you can overcome this type of demon, the only way you can overcome this type of conflict in the spirit, is by prayer and fasting. If you ever want to increase your capacity, you do it with prayer and fasting. You know, I don't just pray and fast if I've got a problem. I pray and fast to increase my capacity. My geestelike capacity. So that I can work can begin. So that I can bid and I can fall the yellow on earth. I'm busy crucifying this flesh. Why? I need to increase my capacity. And Jesus said, fall back to the room. With what? With water. Take that which is ordinary. Take that which is not significant. And use that. And through that I'll bring the extraordinary. I've come to tell you, oftentimes God will use the ordinary to do the extraordinary. Amen. God will use you, me, the ordinary, to do extraordinary things. Amen. We just need to be ourselves. We just need to be ordinary. Ek moet net water wees. Hy sal my verander in al my. Wat jy het sien vandag, jy het sien hierdie persoon wat hier staan. Dis water. Die wijn kom nog. The wine's coming. This is not my pinnacle. This is my, I'm coming up the starting blocks. If this is my pinnacle, they will break my heart. I'm still trusting God to change me into wine. I'm still trusting God to change this church into wine. We might look small, we might look ordinary now, but watch out. When the Holy Spirit starts moving and God starts using us, you're going to see wine manifest. You're going to see wine manifest. And there's people in this church, they're sitting now in the chairs. One day you're going to see them standing in this pulpit, preaching with authority and preaching with power. You're going to see them leading prayer meetings and leading cell groups and running the youth ministry and running the kids ministry. Why? Because God knows how to take water and turn it into wine. Amen. And He filled the water pots with water. Let me just ask you a question. That water, where did it come from? I said it just now. Wat die water kom, wat was die bron van die water? Dit kon een spruit gewees het, dit kon een rivier gewees het, dit kon een dam gewees het. Now I want you to see this passage of scripture from a perspective that maybe you've never seen it before. And this week I saw it from a perspective I've never seen it before. You are the water. But how is God going to change you into water? How is God going to take your water and turn it into wine? How is God going to bless you and do the extraordinary in your life? How was that water going to change? It had to leave the comfort of its habitat and be drawn out of its comfort zone to be used for God's glory. You know what's the problem with a lot of us, and I'm speaking about myself, we don't like change. Here we are, but we don't want it. Here we are, but we don't want it. Here we are, but we don't want it. But we don't do it that I'm still not full and that I have to, I have to now say, I have to do it now. I want to stick to my comfort zone. I want to cling to my natural habitat. If that was the attitude of the water, it would have never been used for the glory of God. If God's going to use you, He's going to draw you out. He's going to draw you out. He's going to make you leave your convenience and your comfort and then be used for His glory. But they find us so bad, we're like slaves. 
Ons lyk soos een dwaas, dis hoe kom die Heere my nie kan gebruik, dis hoe kom ek wil nie die evangelie verkondig, dis hoe kom ek wil nie bid vir die mense, dis hoe kom ek wil nie uitreik en saai nie, want nou nou doen ek iets, en dan lyk ek soos een dwaas, ek het het gemis, maar so lang as wat jy in jou gemak zone is, gaan die Heere nie jou gebruik nie. You can't be stuck in your comfort zone, and be used for the glory of God. God's going to draw you out. He's going to pull you out. Do you think it's easy for this couple to give up their whole Sunday afternoon, drive out on their own petrol, load up their car, go to Creel, minister there after they've been busy the whole week with ministry, when they're supposed to be taking pension, to go out and minister to orphans? Do you think it's easy for them? Do you think it's easy for the worship team to come up here every Sunday, hour before the time, and to practice songs, and to, and to make sure everything is on note, and to make sure everybody's fine? Do you think it's easy? Do you think it's easy for those that are busy with the children right now to minister to them, to lead them, so that you can sit here and enjoy the church service, and also to make sure they've got spiritual growth? Do you think it's easy to go to the streets and preach the gospel and feed the broken and feed the hurting? But let me tell you something, for those who want to be used of God, God's going to draw you out. Amen. He's going to draw you out. Amen. And as long as you enjoy just sitting back, God cannot use you. God has to draw you out. You know what Moses means? Drawn out. Yes. Pharaoh's daughter drew him out of the water and she gave him the name Moses. <coughs> And Moses' whole life is about God drawing him out. Draws him out of Egypt, puts him in the backside of the desert. Draws him out of the wilderness, then takes him back to Egypt. And then he takes him from Egypt, and he pulls Israel out of Egypt. And then he takes him into the wilderness, and they get to the promised land, and he does not even see the promised land. But his whole life is busy being drawn out for the glory of God. And at the end of it all, he just dies an old man. Is jy bereid dat die Heere jou uitkrijg? Kind van die Heere, hoor wat hy sê. En nie net dit nie, is jy bereid dat die Heere jou uitgeen. 2 Timotheus hoofstuk 4 vers 5 tot 6 Paulus praat met Timotheus en hy sê vorm, jy sê een van gelis, doen die werk van die bediening. Hy sê ek is soos een dank offer, ek is klaar uitgegeen. I've done ministry, I've preached the gospel, but I've been poured out. Timothy, I've been poured out, I'm like a drink offering, I've been poured out. The Bible says when the servants took the water to the master of ceremonies, it was not yet wine. When did it change to wine? In their obedience. And the Bible says as they poured it out, it became wine. The wolf did not, it never said that it was just water. The Bible said, but the dinars had gebeurt this water. Had it gebeurt where it had come from? Had it seen where it had come from? Maar hy water het nooit verander tot wijn, tot hy uitgegeet was. Until it was poured out. If God's going to use you, if God's going to change your water into wine, He's going to pour you out. Hy moet jou uitgeet. Are you ready to be poured out? Are you ready for God to use you? If God shows you an opportunity, if He shows you a need, are you going to meet it or are you going to say, no, not for me? I'm going to sit back, I'm going to be comfortable. I'm going to do what is for me nice. You'll never see water change into wine. Yeah. I'll prophesy to you. As long as you are stuck in your comfort zone, your water will never change to wine. As long as you do what you feel is right, and you don't follow what God tells you to do, you will never see water change into wine. God wants to take you higher. Every person listening now, elke persoon wat nou vir my luister, beerbel jou oor vir. Where you now is not even close to where God wants to take you. You've not seen your best days. You've not had your best revelation. You've not prayed your most powerful prayer. You've not seen your biggest breakthrough. You've not seen how much finances God can give you. You've not experienced your biggest healing. I've come to tell you there's more. I will know for your sin. Your grootste of one of our in your toekomst. Your grootste dear brought wacht for you. Dat's meer in stoer. Maar kan dit weer volgen? Die blokkasie is nie die hele of die duivel nie. 
Wat is jy? Ek gaan hier sê. Ek gaan gemakkelijk wees. Ek gaan nie getrouw wees nie. Ek gaan nie doen wat ek weet ek moet doen nie. Wil jy hierdie tyd volgende jaar sit en getuig, die Heer het nie my water verander nie. Ek het nog steeds die selfde probleem, ek het nog steeds die selfde uitdaging, ek het nog steeds die selfde strijd. Weet jy, as ek een probleem het, listen to what I'm saying and I'm concluding, if I've got a problem, if I've got a struggle, I go fast, I pray, until I see the breath. If there's a lack in my life, if there's an area with which I've got a struggle, if there's an area with which I need breakthrough, I'm not content until I see a manifestation of provision. I'm not content until I see a manifestation of healing. I'm not content until I see God change that situation, that water into wine. I'm not content. Ek is nie nou tevrede met waar ek is. Ek wil hee, die Heere moet hierdie water verander na my. Het jy self voldaan geword? Have you become complacent? Wat is vir jou prioriteit? Wat is die afgod in jou hart? Wie sit op die troon van jou hart? Wat sit op die troon van jou hart? Wil jy rechtig hee die Heere met jou water gaan en nou wij toe? Do you really want to see the glory? You've got to answer these questions. You don't have to tell me. Speak to Him. Speak to Him. And what He says, you do. I speak to Him, what He says, I do. I do what He says. And the Bible says the master of ceremonies called the bride room and he said hey man this is the best wine this is better than what we started with this wine is phenomenal this wine is great you know what that reminds me of Haggai chapter 2 verse 9 the glory of the latter house will be greater than the glory of the former house what you know what that's a prophecy of go read the book of Acts that's the former house God says in the last days the church is going to have a greater glory than the book of Acts. What you read in the book of Acts is just the floor. We're going to hit the ceiling. But what that also tells me is God wants us to increase. God wants you to get better. God wants you to improve. Every chapter with God in your life only gets better and better and better. As you be a to familiar. Is jy bezig om te groei? Is jy bezig om aanpak te heen, invloed te heen? Of is jy tevrede? I can never be, never be, at a place where I feel I'm around. Nee, Heere, help my. Help my om een beter pa te wees. Help my om een beter man te wees. Help my om een beter pastoor te wees. Help my om een beter vriend en een broer te wees. Help my, Heere, van ander my so dat ek kan sien hoe my water van ander na my. Het ek met iemand gepraat volgend? Have I spoken to somebody this morning? I'm going to ask the worship team to come to the front and I'm going to ask everybody to close their eyes right now. Right there where you are, just close your eyes. I say close your eyes, what I mean is focus on God. I want you to focus on Him. Volgend wil ek dit vir mense, vir kostbare kinders van die Heer. En ek wil vir jou vraag, as jy tevrede. I want to ask you this morning, are you happy with where you are? Or are you ready to go to a new level? Are you ready for manifestation of His glory? Are you ready to see God change your water into wine? No matter where you are, no matter what you've experienced, God wants to take you deeper. God wants to take you further. 
God wants to give you more. God wants to entrust you with more. He wants to increase your capacity for more. Ek wil hier, dit is my hart, so begeert, die hierdie tyd volgende jaar, jy sit hier in die kerk, en jy sê, nie, joh, hierdie was wel over jou, maar jy sê, hierdie was een geseen. Ek het geseen hoe inkomste inkom. Ek het geseen hoe alles begin vermeerder. Ek het geseen hoe die Heere kliente gebring oor my pad. Ek het geseen hoe die Heere dere ook gemaakt het. Ek het geseen hoe die Heere genees. Ek het geseen hoe die Heere een verandering bring in my huishouding. Ek het geseen hoe die Heere my gins gee en my werksomstandighede. Ek kan getuig hier was een geseen by jou. Ek kan getuig die Heere het my water verander. I want you to testify this time next year. God has changed your water into wine. And you see His glory. Ek voel die Heere praat hier my volgend en hy sê, ek het jou geroep, maar jy is bezig om stil te staan. Ek het jou geroep, my kind, om een verschil te wees, maar jy het die baton neergeleid. Jy had ook nie meer jou wetloop soos wat jy altyd gaf. Jy het jou gelaat dat omstandighede en mense sy opinies en die teleerstelling het jou teruggehou. En nou is jy bezig om achteruit te gaan en jy besef dit nie. Maar vandag roep ek jou want ek het jou lief. Vandag roep ek jou omdat ek genadig is. En ek sê, kom nou my toe. Ek wil jou gebruik. Ek wil jou gebruik om te profiteer. Ek wil jou gebruik om te bid. Ek wil jou gebruik om die woord te verkondig. Dis hoe kom jy hier is vandag. That's why we are. Tel op die baton. Hak op jou weg. Jou kracht is min, maar ek is jou God. Ek sal jou bemachtig. As jy hier is volgend en jy sê, pas oor bid vir my, ek het nodig dat die Heer my water van my dit na wijn toe. As dit jy is volgend, if you are here this morning and you say, pass the pray for me, I need my water to change to wine. I want you to stretch forth your hand right now. Strek jou hand op as jy sê, Heer, ek wil hier nie met my water van my dit na wijn toe. Dan kan ek nie stilstaan en kyk na na ook as ons hand, dit maak nie saak nie. Maar die Heere sien dat. God sies jou hand. Right now, if you say, Pastor, pray for me. I want to change my water into wine. I want to see a new level of glory. Stand to your feet. I want to pray for you. Just stretch your hands to me. Just say, dear Lord Jesus. Come on, let's say it out. Say, dear Lord Jesus. Here I am today. And I ask you, change my water into wine. Lord, I need you. Lord, I long for you. Lord, do a work in me. Lord, do a work through me. Change me. Help me. Increase my capacity for more of you. Show me what am I to do. Show me which direction I am to go. So that I can testify about the glory of God in my life. In Jesus' name. I want to pray for you right now. You can drop your hands. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I want to pray right now for every person that has prayed this prayer from their hearts. I pray right now, Father, in the name of Jesus, that you would touch them, that you would fold them, that you would do a divine work on the inside of them. I pray, Lord, minister to us. Where? How? When? What, what, what are we to do? How are we to do it? When are we to do it? Show us, Lord. Reveal it unto us, those of us that are willing to step out and be used mightily of you, my God. I pray right now, Lord, speak to us in dreams, in visions, through circumstances, through people, through prophecy, that people will come and tell us 
speak to us, Lord, that we may hear you. Give us the ear to understand in the spirit what God is saying. I pray this right now in Jesus' mighty name. I want you to turn around to your husband, to your wife, to your friend, to the person you came with. If you're standing far from someone, go to somebody, take their hand. Pray that God would bless them with fresh insight. Bit me for the hope. I said, Come on, let's just pray for one another. Pray that.